Welcome to Ahkam SOS, the show that discusses Islamic duties and practices by His Eminence, the Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi. May Allah prolong his life. I'm your host, Mohsin Shah, and joining me is Sheikh Ali Ma'ar. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh Ma'ar. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. How are you this evening? Alhamdulillah. Sheikh Ma'ar, over the last couple of episodes, we've been discussing salah, we've been looking at different types of salah, different rulings and criteria. Um, let us talk about some miscellaneous issues in regards to salah. And one is that without careers, sometimes we have to travel. Now, it's very common to have sailors and pilots. But also we have those who are astronauts who sometimes have to live on a space station that is traveling around the Earth. Um, sometimes we have those in the Marines uh, and the Navy that live in submarines which are continuously moving. Um, what is the ruling for those individuals? Do they have to pray uh, Qasr Salah or they pray in full? A'udhu Billah, As-Sami' Al-Alim, Al-Shaytan Al-Rajim, Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Wa Sallallahu Ala Muhammadin Wa Alihi Al-Tayyibin Al-Tahirin. Allahumma Salli Ala Those who travel for such distances away from the earth, for example, or deep in the sea, in the ocean, and such like. And that's mainly their job. Um, they're not going for leisure, for, for a trip. Um, because it's, it's part of their job and work, or sometimes research. Scientists are sent to do some research. They stay for months uh, in the space, for example. In this case, if it's that their own job or study or research. In this case, they have to pray in full and fast as well. Because now they become the kafir safar. They travel often. The hukum of such uh, individuals is that they have to fast and pray in full. They cannot pray qasr at all. Uh, it doesn't matter if you uh, travel up or, or down, you know, or, or horizontal or vertical. At the end of the day, you are traveling. So if it's for work and study and continuous trouble, then basically you have to uh, pray in full. If it's just a leisure, you're going for a day or two days, you know, some, now they have uh, uh, packages for this holiday space you know, where you can actually pay huge money and uh, uh, go to space, for example. That's just a leisure for uh, three days for a week then the Salah will be Qasr, of course, in the space. But otherwise, if it's for work, for study, for research, that work-related, the Salah and, uh, will be full, and of course, fasting will be full as well, and complete. MashaAllah, Ahsant. Shaykh, what about if someone is traveling via space? Let's say that we're living in the world of the universe of Star Wars and Star Trek, and we are traveling from one planet to another planet. Now we, we get on board the spaceship and it's going to take us maybe three or four months to get to our destination. So we're on this spaceship and we're, we're, on, we're living on this spaceship. Are our prayers qasr or they're full? We're going out of leisure and we're going and we're traveling to a new destination. Maybe we want to move to a new planet. During that traveling period, three or four months, is our prayer qasr or is it in full? If the trip is not work-related or study-related, as I've mentioned, um, because you are migrating from one planet to another planet, for example, if it's possible in the future, in this case, on the way, you pray Qasr. In the, the first trip, you're going to the moon, for example, or other planets. As we travel from, let's say, from India to the US or Canada, and it takes about, what, 20 hours, let's yes. say, in one go, for example. So you pray all the salah in the airplane, uh, qasr. That's it, you pray qasr. So by the time you get there, of course, when you get to that planet or that location, if you stay there for 10 days or more, then you pray in full, 
you make the intention yes. of, of staying there, residing there, then you pray in full. Otherwise, if you stay there for just two, three days, and you come back by the spaceship, then you pray asr as well. So the hukum is similar to the ones on the earth. Um, it depends on uh, the intention and what, what you're intending for. Is it work? Is it study? Or just pleasure and holiday? Shaykh, some may argue that, oh, we're on the moon for 20 days. Um, but the moon is rotating around the earth. The, the moon is moving and traveling around the earth. Therefore, we are also traveling and we don't have to pray the full salah. Is this a valid argument? Not really, because even us on the earth, we're moving as well. The earth is moving, um, rotating around the rotating sun. as well by itself. So, no, because um, you are in a new location um, and you migrated to the moon, for example, and you stayed more than 10 days, then you have to pray in full or less than that you pray Asr. The same rules applies, whether on Earth or on the Moon. You are migrating or going for a holiday, for example, for a week there and come back. You still have to apply the ahkam of the Salah, either Asr or in full. MashaAllah, inshallah, Shaykhna. I mean, you'll be able to visit space one day and, and have a look at the beautiful inshallah. sciences that Allah SWT has created. Shaykhna, in regards to traveling a lot, frequent traveling, if there's a, let's say there's a lady uh, and you know, she's from Birmingham and mashallah she's got married and now she lives in London but she visits her parents every week so every weekend she'll go in the car two hour drive and she'll go visit her parents when she goes there does she have to pray Qasr Salah or the full Salah now mind you she doesn't live there anymore her home is in London now but it's very frequent she goes every weekend to see her parents does she pray Qasr or does she pray the full Salah? If she abandoned, as you mentioned, the city that she used to live with her parents, so she abandoned, as they say, Iraq. If she abandoned and left that city, that she no longer want, wants to come back and live there with her parents. In this case, when she goes there, she prays Qasr. Okay. Otherwise, if she also intending to stay there again and go back again and she counts as the first hometown and London is the, her second hometown whenever she goes there she prays in full because now she has two hometowns Birmingham and London mm -hmm. so it depends on intention so when she abandoned uh, her previous hometown and now she has a new hometown which is called London in this case when she goes there she prays Qasr Otherwise, if it's still her first hometown, then she prays in full. It depends on the intention. Ahsan. Sheikh, what about those who travel frequently for studying? Um, I mean, when I was at university in London, we had a lot of students from Luton and Bedford. Uh, they'll get the training. Uh, as, I mean, it'll take them half an hour, 45 minutes to get into London from where they live. But they lived... Um, and you could say 14, 15, 16 miles away from the M25. So it is like for them, they're traveling and it is within the, you know, the, the limit, the criteria for Qasr prayer. Um, for them, do they pray Qasr or is it a full prayer for them? Because that place in which they used to study there is no more longer um, their place of study and residing. And as I mentioned, if he goes every week, uh, to London to study and come back is as if the person who works there and, and comes back every every week. Of course, that individual will have to pray in full and fast because that's Kathir mm -hmm. safar you know, frequent traveler um, and often traveling there for work or study. But now he's going there to visit somebody, uh, to meet somebody. In this case, he's no longer uh, a frequent traveler, Kathir safar in this case, he has to, has to uh, shorten his salah and break his fast. Okay, so if he's traveling for class and lectures, he has to pray the full salah. Exactly. Okay, exactly. Uh, but, if he's, but, so, but if he's like uh, doing it after, after he's finished his studies and he's going to visit old friends or old teachers or something, 
then he has to pray Qasr Salah. Exactly, unless if he makes the intention of staying 10 days or more. Okay. That's fine. Then he can uh, pray full and fast the whole month if he stayed the whole month from Ramadan, of course. Sheikhna, what happens when um, I'm at my place of residence? It is time for Dhuhr, the Adhan has gone. Uh, I'm busy getting ready, I've got a plane to catch. Um, I don't pray my salah. Uh, I go to the airport, I get on the plane. Uh, I'm traveling now um, and I have a moment now to pray. Do I pray my prayer in full or do I do it in Qasr? Because when I left, it was time for Dhuhr prayer. But I've, um, I you know, purposely delayed it because I was busy and I had, to, I had a plane to catch. Uh, now I've, I've traveled a couple of hundred miles. Do I pray full or do I pray Qasr on the plane? Well, you had the option of praying full in your home, own hometown before you leave your home uh, towards the airport or even the airport if you had time. After you checked in your bags, for example, and luggages, you could have went to the prayer rooms and prayed in full if the airport was inside the city, you know, not outside, uh, within the distance of uh, where you can pray Qasr. If the airport was near the city, uh, your hometown. So you could have prayed that in full, back home or on your way to the airport, for example, in, inside the airport. Otherwise, uh, if you haven't prayed it, then you can pray it in the aeroplane if there is not enough time when reaching the destination, because sometimes um, the time is too short. By the time you arrive, yes. it's sunset, and the Adan Maghrib mm -hmm. will call there. So you have to pray in the airplane. So you pray Qasr in the airplane, for example. Okay. Unless you, when you arrive there, destination, and you have enough time, let's say it's only um, one hour flight to Paris from London, which is very close, and it's uh, summertime, well, you have at least, well, eight, ten hours of daytime. So when you ar arrive in Paris, for example, from London, you do the intention of staying ten days iqamah in Paris, for example, and you pray the same Salat al-Dhuhr in full, fine. But with the intention of staying there at least ten okay. days or more. Mm -hmm. So that's the other way of making this uh, to happen. Ahsan, thank you very much, Sheikh Na. And thank you to all of you for joining us on this episode of Hakam SOS. Inshallah, we'll be back with a new episode and a new discussion uh, with Sheikh Ali Maash, inshallah. Mm -hmm. Until then, Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullah wa Barakatuh.